always try to find the good news in the gospel. And I have to confess to you, it was hard to do today. Today, Mark gives us a flashback of a story. A story that's really not about Jesus. Jesus doesn't appear in the story. But this flashback story certainly flashes forward for Jesus' story, for the story of Jesus, for the passion of Christ. We have a governor with John the Baptist, Herod, King Herod, who was a tetrarch, one of four kings in the region. Pilate was a tetrarch as well. <coughs> Mark's story today is about the death of John the Baptist and Herod Antipas. Herod lived from 21 BCE, before the Common Era, to 39 CE, approximately. And from the story, we know that Herod had taken his brother's wife. Now, by the law, if your brother died, then yes, you were obligated to take your brother's wife. But the thing here was, Philip, his brother, is still very much alive. <laughs> and this is what John was preaching against for Herod and his wife, Herodias. Who, by the way, as you heard, wanted John dead. But Herod actually liked listening to John. Didn't quite understand all the things he was saying, but he liked listening to him. So he had him put in prison, sort of, I guess, to protect him. But many of you know this story. Herod the Powerful gets caught up, let's call it what it is, lust. <laughs> Can I say that better? Lust. <laughs> and he makes a promise that doesn't go the way he thinks it's going to go. Now this must have been some dance. <laughs> and she must have been quite a look. For a who makes a promise like this? I will give you whatever you ask for of the half my kingdom. That was some dance. <laughs> but he made this promise in public before the leaders of Galilee, his courtiers, officers. He made it right there in front of God and everybody. So why did he keep it? He liked John. He didn't want to kill John. Well, you sort of have to know the honor and shame society of first century Palestine. I mean, he said it in public. If you didn't follow through, you were shamed. If you followed through, you were honored for it. Now, a lot of that honor and shame society in this country has disappeared, I think, overall for good. But it wasn't too long ago that girls would disappear from our midst for nine or ten months because it was bringing shame upon the family because they were having a baby out of wedlock. It wasn't too awfully long ago that marriages of mixed race were hidden by families. And it wasn't too awful long ago. It's still, in fact, it still exists that people don't like to acknowledge, some don't like to acknowledge that they have a gay son and a lesbian daughter because of the shame they feel. There are societies in our world today, you hear about them on the news, where if the daughter gets raped, the father kills her. 
because she, in some convoluted way, has brought shame upon the family. It wasn't too long ago that the word cancer was whispering. She has cancer. He has cancer. It was some way a shame. And as I told you before, I was 26 before I found out that one of my close family relatives had been divorced. And when I was told this, there were weeping and wails. And I'm thinking, Okay. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, why are you, have you waited 26 years to tell me? <laughs> so yes, that honor and shame is still with us. Not like it was. In fact, it may be a little bit more insidious now. Because now the advertising world has the honor and shame culture. And if you have plastic surgery, that's fine. <laughs> now, I certainly wouldn't be against it. But there are people that have, the one person I read about has had over 200 plastic surgeries. It's because the culture, especially for women, the culture is telling you that it's shameful if you don't stay young looking. That's our culture. And for men too, but especially for women. That it's shameful if you don't go out and buy a new car every three years. Two, you really don't want to be shameful. <laughs> <laughs> that it's shameful if you don't wear the right fashions. I know, I got caught up, I don't care anymore. But I used to. <laughs> So there is an honor-shame society still. And I'll throw this out to you. How many of us, you do not need to answer this, unless you feel so called. How many of us have made promises we wish we had made? So I think the good news 
is that we know that we are to know where our power comes from. We each hold power. No matter where we may find ourselves in society, we each hold some power. And we need to remember where that power resides. Because the power of love comes from God. We reside in that power. Or should. And knowing that the banquet of Herod that night ended in death. But also knowing that a few chapters over in Mark, there's another banquet. The banquet of feeding 5,000 through love that doesn't end in death, but ends in life. So for me, that is the good news. Knowing where my power resides and knowing that using that power through love to make people more is what we're called to do. Not using the power to make people less. Amen. Um,